16,320 hours. That's roughly how many hours I've spent in my life using Jira. Now, why is this an important number? Well, according to Malcolm Gladwell, it takes a roughly 10,000 hours to become an expert in something. And here I am at 16,000 hours, just 4,000 hours shy of hitting almost 20,000 hours, which by Malcolm Gladwell's standard, I'm gonna become a super expert. Now I'm making this video not to show off about how many hours I spend in Jira, but rather to encourage you, to motivate you, to show you that if you become obsessed with this as well, if you put in the time, if you roll up your sleeves and get to work, you too can also become an expert. And I wanna walk you through my journey. I wanna walk you through what I've been through over my 13 year career and kind of show you the path that I took to eventually get these 16,000 hours. Because I didn't always start off as an expert. In fact, for most of my career, I was plagued with imposter syndrome. I never had a single ounce of confidence in my skills. And that all went away just a couple of years ago when I became obsessed with learning and mastering Jura. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or if you wanna share your journey with me, let me know in the comment section below. All right, so let's take you back all the way to 2013. Now I know I've had a career for 13 years, but about 10 years ago, that's when I first got introduced to an agile-based project management tool. Now I used to work at a very big defense contractor and in 2013, I was given the keys to the kingdom that is TFS, or Team Foundation Server. If you're not familiar with Team Foundation Server, you might be familiar with something called Azure DevOps. That is the cloud version of what TFS was many, many years ago. Now, starting my career young, I had no idea what I was doing, but 10 years ago, that's the first time that I ever heard what an epic was, or a task, or a subtask, or even a story point. And it was at that point that my career and my love for this agile world that we're in started. Now, even though I had the keys to the kingdom, I always felt like I was drinking water from a fire hose. I was really, really young in my career and I never felt like I had the proper training, the proper opportunity to really digest and learn how to use TFS. I always felt like I was running at a million miles per hour and just barely even able to hold onto my job. The person that I had replaced at this company had actually written four books on how to use TFS and had published them through Microsoft's press. So I had some really, really big shoes to fill. Eventually, that imposter syndrome got the better of me and I ended up leaving that team and I basically shut that door and I never looked back. Until a few years later in 2016, I got introduced to version one. Now version one is the first time in a couple of years that I started using another Agile-based project management tool. And I was using it because the team that I was on at that point was a SAFE organization. We were learning SAFE for the first time and we we're actually trying to implement SAFE on my, on my team. Now, my experience with SAFE was not very good. My experience with version one was not very good either. I was a very much a backseat driver in all this. I didn't own it, I wasn't in IT, I wasn't doing anything extensive with it, but I was using it. And it gave me some new perspectives. I was able to compare version one with TFS and I saw what I liked and what I didn't like, but ultimately I was very stubborn and I loved TFS and version one just wasn't TFS. Now fast forward a couple of months, I changed companies, I actually changed states, and I ended up working on a team, another major defense contractor, where I got to learn Jura for the very first time. Now just to give you a perspective as to where Jura or Atlassian was, in their journey, Jira could have been bought for $10. 10 US dollars would get you a license for Jira server and that license was good forever. As long as you didn't care for updates, you could own Jira for the rest of your life. It was just $10. But it was at this moment that I started using Jira. I started becoming an administrator. And I was a very good Jira administrator for about two years when I decided to switch. I decided to go from being an IT Jira admin to being a project manager and a user of Jira in order to help deliver very, 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 very expensive products. Now, because I knew Jira so well, I was able to start putting on a different hat. 
I was able to start seeing Jira from a different perspective, a different lens than most people that typically use Jira. Because most folks that use Jira, they're either A, the admin, or B, the user, but it's not that common when it's both, at least not when you know both very well. And so I started to leverage my intimate skill set and knowledge of Jira to make my life as a program manager a lot easier, or as a project manager. And at that point, I started really getting really, really good at both worlds. I started getting really good at just using Jira and started getting really, really good at being the administrator of Jira. Now, fast forward a little bit more, I ended up quitting everything. I ended up leaving all that life and I just became basically a Jira cloud administrator. Up until this point, all my Jira experience was on the data center or server versions of Jira and it wouldn't be until 2021 that I would transition over to the cloud. Now, once I transitioned over to the cloud, that's when my obsession began. For six straight months, I used Jira obsessively for 12 hours a day. And then after that, I started and continued to use Jira, even to this day, for roughly 12 hours a day. I am in this tool almost the entire day, and I probably have put in more hours in Jira within the last 24 months than I did the first four years of me using Jira. And it's that obsession, that drive, that determination, that passion for this tool that has helped me become an expert where I can be very well respected with the community here and people look up to the information that I have to share because I spend an enormous amount of time using this tool. And I'm using it, again, as an administrator and as a user, so I love that I get to share all this with you. But that's just my story. I wanted to kind of flip the script a little bit and kind of motivate you. After all, these videos are for you in the audience and I wanna help you eventually get up to this kind of a level of confidence, a level of expertise. And so my first recommendation is, if you're gonna pick something, I highly recommend that you become obsessed with it. It doesn't have to be Jira, okay? You can pick something, whether it be software development, maybe you wanna become a writer, a video game designer, whatever it may be, you just need to become very, very obsessed because that moment that that became a realization for me, the moment that I chose that Jira was gonna be the thing that I got really, really good at, the moment I decided to specialize, that's the moment my career exponentially took off. But most importantly, that's also the moment in my career where that imposter syndrome left my life. I can honestly tell you to this day, I have a zero ounces of imposter syndrome in my life. So. If you want to get really, really good, make sure that you find something that has a community. The community is a great way to learn. It's a great way to keep you accountable. I used to be really, really scared of contributing to the community because I thought, well, what if I'm wrong? But it was that fear of being wrong that challenged me, that pushed me, that motivated me to learn the thing so that when I would speak in the community, I had facts and data, I had information, I had truth. And that development of that truth, that development of those facts and data is what kept snowballing and snowballing until I eventually got really, really good at this tool. And then I can confidently answer questions in the community. But I highly recommend that you find some sort of a community-based thing that you wanna become obsessed with because even though there's a couple of haters out there, the majority of the folks are gonna be very, very encouraging and they're gonna help you out. They're gonna be able to answer your questions, give you resources, and drastically shortcut that life. Because if you can find a mentor, if you can find somebody that has basically lived the life that you want to have, and you latch on to that person, your learning gets exponentially faster. You don't no longer need to go read books or get certifications, you just need to absorb everything you can from this individual. Also, I recommend that you start teaching. I started this YouTube channel about six months after I decided to become obsessed with Jura. And I can honestly say that once I started that channel and my life literally became this channel, that's when I really, really skyrocketed because I could have given up. I could have just said, okay, I'm done. I'm good. I've achieved expert level status in Jura and be done with it and just be happy with a day job. But I chose to teach. I, I chose to pick a life where I would basically teach and show people what I know and help others in their journey through Jira. Because when I was going through the journey of Jira, I didn't have YouTube. There weren't videos on how to do this. It was me and a 500 page document from Atlassian and a lot of lonely nights just reading that documentation, learning how to use Jira. 
But today there's so many more resources, so much more availability for you to learn how to do something, right? And I'm sure that in other areas that you want to become an expert in, you got to find something similar, right? But you ultimately, I urge you to teach. I urge you to share what you know, because once you can teach something, once you can get to that level of confidence that you can articulate what's in your head, your confidence goes up a lot because then you're basically giving yourself that self-confidence within you just by having to hit that record button. So that's really, really important. Also, in your career, if you are fortunate enough to do these things, don't just take it as a job. Many, many of you can just simply show up to work, do your required job, and then just clock out. But if you have an opportunity, if you have a manager, a development team, or a leadership team that can really, really foster that curiosity and help you become an expert, 100% recommend that you become an expert. Because let me tell you firsthand, having been on both sides of the table, just being a Jira admin with a boss that wasn't really, really that good, and I wasn't that good at Jira, my experience was horrible. I used to hate having to use Jira because my manager at the time, he had introduced Jira to the company, so he had a specific way of how to use Jira, and any deviation from his vision was always an uphill battle. So I absolutely hated being a Jira admin. But today, I'm an authority in this space. I get looked up to for an answer, for guidance, for helping lead people. And it's not because Jira is different, because the tool has pretty much stayed the same in six years, but it's because of the approach and the attitude that I took. I obsessed with it, <laughs> okay, right? If, <laughs> the key word for the day is obsession. You must have this obsession because once I became really, really good at it, then my managers, the people that, that basically employ me, they now look up to me, right? They're ex relying on my expertise to help make very, very expensive decisions. So it's the same job that I'm doing in a six year span. It's just drastically different based on how much effort you put in. Six years ago, this was just a job for me. Today, I am a subject matter expert in this thing. So very, very different outcomes. And then finally, you have to use the tool. There is no way around it, just use it. And with Jira, it's really, really cool because not only do you, can you be an admin and or a user of Jira, but you can actually then start developing plugins for Jira. So there's so many different ways to get Jira involved in your life. And I recommend that whatever you choose to become an expert in, try to weave it into your family, try to weave it into your day to days. If you're a detailer, if you're whatever you're trying to do, the video game developer, whatever that topic is, involve people in your family, involve other people and build that community internally with people that you can trust because the more you spend interacting with it, whether you're designing something new or just trying to hack at it and try to build something new, you're going to learn it exponentially faster. This tool and really anything in life, you can take two paths to learn stuff. You can just read the book or you can roll up your sleeves and go full Miss Frizzle and just make mistakes, get messy and just learn by errors, learn by figuring out how does this work? How, why does this work like this? And I guarantee you that if you do that enough times and you don't give up, because you also have to treat this like the Super Mario effect by Mark Rover. You can't just stop the first time that you hit a wall, the first time that you fail. Because when we're little and we're playing Super Mario and we fell or we got hit by that shell, we didn't just chuck our Super Nintendo out the window. We kept on going for hours and hours and hours. And if you really, really want to excel at something, if you really, really want to become an expert at any topic that you want, then all you got to do is pretend that you're playing Super Mario again and just try to beat Bowser. So that's it for this video. I hope this motivates you. I hope this encourages you because if you're kind of on the fence or if you're not happy with your job or maybe you just got laid off and you're like, what do I do? Well, calculate how many hours are between Memorial Day and Labor Day in the United States. There's roughly 100 days. I challenge you to take on those 100 days and do something bold. Do something that you normally wouldn't do and do something out of your comfort zone. And I guarantee you that when you look back 100 days later, and as long as you stay consistent and obsessed, those two together, that's going to be the recipe for massive, massive success that's going to come your way.
and watch that imposter syndrome go out the door and watch you finally rescue Princess Peach, which apparently, spoilers if you haven't seen the Super Mario movies, is just Bowser being in love with the princess. So this whole time we just thought she was trying to kidnap her. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or if you want to share your, your journey or your story, let me know in the comment section below. I would love to hear what other people are doing and I appreciate you. Um, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. The chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need